Hey y'all, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be sharing three small home projects that are easy to do and they're budget friendly. So I hope today's video gives you lots of motivation to tackle something around your house as well. I'm going to start off today's video by regrouting the tile in the front bathroom, so that's the first project. So I had to run to Lowe's to grab a few materials. All right, so here's what I ended up getting. I got some pre-mixed grout that's just ready to be used. I also got a pack of gloves, a sponge for cleaning the grout once I'm done, a grouting float, and then I also got some silicone sealant for like around the edges and stuff. So that's what I got. I'm going to get in here and start. I'll show you the grout first before I start scraping, um, get everything scraped out, and then we'll use the grout and I'll show you guys how it's done. Okay. So up close and personal, you can see there are some holes in the grout here. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, there's some like right here as well. And if you look closely, it doesn't look as good as this does because this was never sealed. Um, and eventually over time, uh, after us using the shower, it just kind of turned colors from the hard water that we have. And like I said, no matter how much scrubbing I do, I can take a toothbrush to it, bleach, it just never comes back clean. It never looks as good as this grout. So yeah, um, this is where we're at. But we're gonna start scraping and get as much of the grout removed as I can and just grout over top of it. All right, so here is the little grout scraping tool I'm gonna use. I ordered this off of Amazon. It came as a two pack and it came with a total of eight little scraping blades. So that's what I'm gonna use. Um, and it works really well. I actually tried it out um, the other day in a vlog, so you can see, but it just scrapes the grout right out. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, and really the goal is not to take all the grout out, it's just to kind of get it deep enough to where when I put the new grout, it will adhere. Um, and also like rough it up so that way, hopefully, the new grout sticks well. So this really isn't hard at all. It's just time consuming. So I'm just gonna take my time and just kind of start on one section and work my way this way. I think it's gonna be the easiest way to do it. And I'm probably gonna run through all of the blades here. Um, but like I said, these were pretty inexpensive. It was like 10 bucks for this two pack that came with the eight blades. But I am gonna put something down for my knees so that way I don't hurt my knees. You wanna get like a little pad or something down and just go to town. At this point, I had already went through two blades. I used both of the blades that were on the handles. So it was time to replace both of them. You have to have a Phillips head screwdriver in order to do this. So I just took the screws out, replaced the blade, and then tightened everything back up and went back to work with all the grout scraping. Um, once I was done with scraping, I did take my vacuum and just kind of suck up any of the loose debris. Um, that way when I go to add the new grout in, there's, you know, it adheres really well. So right away, I did notice that this grout wasn't as smooth as grout that you would typically mix yourself. Um, it still worked really well, but you'll notice as I'm using the grout float and kind of spreading the grout out that it kind of separates itself. Like I said, it still worked fine and I just decided to go with it. Um, and I love the color I chose. I'll have this product linked down below and any like materials that I needed in case you have a shower like mine that needs to be regrouted. Now, just a few tips whenever you're applying grout like this. I feel like it's easier if you work in small sections and kind of clean up, scrape away as you go. That way when it comes to actually cleaning, it's not a complete disaster. Because you will notice later on, I do end up having to sponge off all the extra grout that's left behind. 
and you just want to make sure that you don't leave like a huge mess because the cleanup is always the worst in my opinion when it comes to working on projects like this. Doing the project itself can, you know, be difficult at times, but it's always the cleanup that gets me. So you just kind of want to like rub in small areas and then take your grout float and kind of slide it around to pick up any extra grout that's left behind. So I did want to share in case you are new here to my channel. So the house that we're in now, this purchase was a flipped home. So a guy purchased it in rough shape, turned around and did a quick flip on it and then resold it and made a profit. So of course the craftsmanship is not like the best in this house. There's a lot of areas that definitely could have been done a little bit better. Um, specifically this tile, some of the tiles are really, really close together and kind of crooked. Some stick up higher than others. And I will say going with the darker grout kind of amplified those imperfections. So if you want to hide imperfections, definitely recommend going with a lighter grout. The darker the grout, the more you're going to see in my opinion. So it, I mean, as far as like cleanliness goes, you'll see less with dark grout, but you will see all the imperfections as far as like uneven grout lines and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, I do plan on sealing this grout so that way cleaning it will be easy. I am a huge fan of keeping things simple and not having to use super harsh chemicals to clean. So with that being said, I will be sealing it. I just got to let it dry for a couple days first. All right, so this grout is not as it's like a little bit more dry than the grout I've used in the past. Um, it worked well. I mean, everything is coated. I'm just going to kind of let it sit for a second and then wipe it clean before it dries. You don't want it to dry completely before you try to wipe off the grout because then it'll be like really hard to get it off. So I'm going to take this sponge that I got. I don't know what I did with it and just kind of wipe everything clean. So this is the part where I was talking about how you have to clean the grout before it completely dries. Now, it might look like I'm scrubbing it out, but you're, you're not. You're kind of just gently putting pressure and picking up the grout off of the top layer of the tiles. You don't want to scrub it because then it'll get the tile out of the grooves and that defeats the whole purpose of re-grouting it. So just want to, you know, scrub gently and make sure your sponge isn't soaking wet, but wet enough to clean up the extra grout on the top. Once it's all clean, you're definitely going to want to let the grout fully dry before you put any sealant on it and obviously before you use the shower. So I decided to let ours dry for a couple days and we just haven't used the shower since I've grouted it. And unfortunately, a little bit later on in the video, I moved on to working on my mailbox and I ended up hurting my knee pretty bad and then it got infected, which I'm currently in bed right now finishing up this video. Haven't even finished the mailbox. It's halfway done. I just, I cannot believe I got hurt. Um, but yeah, I still haven't had a chance to, to seal the shower. Once my knee is better, I'll obviously get in here and do that and I'll share that um, in an upcoming video. Um, I'm probably just going to use the same brand that I used as far as the grout goes for the sealant. And you can just Google grout sealers and they will definitely make a difference when it comes to keeping your grout clean. I swear it makes a huge difference because grout, when it gets dirty, it's hard to clean out. But anyway, here's before and after of the grout. And then I'm going to jump into a quick sponsored ad. I appreciate you guys so much for watching these. They really help support my family and I can't thank you guys enough. I have quite the story to tell you. So yesterday I was working hard on, actually two days ago I worked on the grout and then yesterday I worked really hard at working on the mailbox trying to get that project complete as quick as possible. Well of course I am moving faster than I probably should be and I was trying to carry a whole lot of wood at once and like walk through my carport which is a disaster and I tripped over some plastic, one of those like plastic wraps that go around wood. It got in between my feet as if my shoelaces were tied. <laughs> and I said, J -j 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 -j! boom, hit the ground. Full, like body on the ground. Wood went flying, I went flying, and my knee broke the fall. It's pretty gnarly, it's pretty swollen right now. I'm, I'm not gonna show you guys to save you from that. But yeah, that has been a bummer. I tried to work through it today. Um, I went and ran some errands and I was fine at first. The more I moved around, the better it felt. But then all of a sudden it just started aching so badly. So now I'm in bed playing Matchmasters. And today's video is sponsored by Matchmasters. It literally could not have come at a better time to get this opportunity to work with them. 
due to my knee. <laughs> so now I can kill some time and play a really fun game. So I am new to Matchmasters as well, but it's so much fun to play and it's definitely worth the download in my opinion. Matchmasters is a multiplayer match three game. In Matchmasters, you can either play live against your friends, people from around the world, or by yourself in one of the solo modes. Matchmasters is fun, entertaining, and competitive, and I love a good competitive game. Ha, ah, makes me so nervous. <laughs> Whenever I'm trying to like find them and I can't see any matches, it makes me so nervous. My hand starts going like this. Oh my gosh. And then like the anticipation to see if they're going to get anything, it kills me. <laughs> oh, yay, yay. I won. <laughs> I win. I love it. Whenever you win, it's like so exciting. And then I just unlocked a solo game. The solo games are pretty cool because you have to hit like a certain amount um, it, within a certain amount of turns, which is... Harder than it seems, honestly. All right, final round. Here we go. Ooh, did y'all see that? <laughs> Matchmasters is available to download on the App Store. You can also get it on Google Play, or you can just click on the link in the description box to download Matchmasters and complete the in-game rewards calendar to win daily free gifts and the chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Matchmasters will be notifying winners in game on January 28th and thank you so much you guys for trusting my recommendation on this game and thank you Matchmasters for sponsoring today's video. Jumping back into the video we're gonna go back to where I left off in the bathroom. Alrighty the grout has been regrouted. <laughs> looks really good you can see it's starting to dry right here and how light it's gonna get so it looks a little dark right now because it's still a little wet but it should look very similar to what's here. I love it. It looks so clean again. Feels great. All right, so while I was at Lowe's, I ended up getting this plant. So I've been trying to accumulate plants in our house. Um, plants just help like filter the air and I love house plants. I think they're so pretty. So I ended up buying this one. I love the pot color too. Like I think it's so pretty. The one that was here in my daughter's room was actually dying. So I took it out to revive it and I have it on my buffet. <laughs> my buffet cabinet right now so I'm actually gonna keep that one out there because I like the way it looks but hang this one up in here um, and it was cheaper to buy it with the hanging thing than it was to buy it alone so I figured I'll just use this little rope or holder I don't know what those are called um, in a different space but let me get this one up here So I wanted to show you, this is the plant I was talking about that was in my daughter's room that was dying and I finally brought it back to life. It's actually growing pretty quick now, but I put it on here on this little um, faux book that I got from a thrift store. This is like so awesome. And honestly, when I first saw it, I thought it was a legit book. Like the pages, well, the fake pages <laughs> look real. I was like, dang, this is so nice. It's huge. And I saw it was only 12 bucks. So I was like, you know what? Let me grab it. I didn't realize it was from Hobby Lobby. I probably could have gotten it cheaper from Hobby Lobby on like the 50% off sale, but I love the colors of it. I think it just goes so well with the look that I'm into right now. And then with the plant on top, I am just obsessed with the mirror. I do want to get a different lampshade um, for this. I don't love this lampshade. Let me show you what it looks like with the cone shape instead. You'll see what a difference it makes. So I'm just going to borrow it from this lamp. I like, I prefer the shape over that like dome. <laughs> Let me see. I just think it looks, oh, ooh, what is that? It looks like a handprint. I don't know what's on my lampshade, but we'll just have to spin it so no one can see it. Like, oh geez, ow. <laughs> this is chair there, Carrie. See, I don't know why, but I just love the way that the cone shape lampshade looks so much better. It's like, it just fits the look I guess I'm going for a little bit better. I do want to replace these uh, picture frames though. I want to go with something a little bit more like antique, unique. 
traditional look. I, I don't mind the modern, but I just feel like I'm kind of trying to transition everything. So we'll see. I'll leave them for now. I'm trying not to spend any money and I have frames I could actually use probably. But you know what, let's do that. Let's switch those out. All right, so this is the second small home project I'm sharing with you guys today. It's just simply switching out home decor that you already have on hand, changing out some frames, switching around a lampshade, moving decor around. Those little things make such a huge difference for a space and it's really affordable to do. Right, so here's how the dining room is looking. I really love it. I think it looks so simple and like elegant, kind of like more traditional. I really love the colors and everything and I definitely love these frames a lot more. And one thing that I didn't realize that I wanted, and I may even get a bigger mirror for this space and I'm kind of regretting selling that mirror that I had. <laughs> it's okay though. I can always find another one, I'm sure. But I love having the mirror here because then whenever you walk in you get to see like when you first walk in the door you see the built-ins on the opposite side and I think it's so pretty um, I can't wait to get the trim work done on this wall I already purchased that so I just got to work on that in an upcoming video and this is kind of random but I have to rebuild our mailbox <laughs> our mailbox has completely fallen apart it's like leaning uh, my daughter said that she saw the mail lady hit the mailbox, so I don't know, but it's just like, it's leaning like this. So I need to fix that up really quick before it hits the ground. Um, I am going to just probably look it up on Pinterest and get some like inspiration for a mailbox. I have some wood on hand, so I feel like I can come up with something inexpensive. Let's Google it. DIY mailbox. Oh crap. DIY mailbox. See what it says the thing is like how do they get them in the ground that's what that's what's stressing me out i really like this one now with the light on it how cool ah i think i want to do that <laughs> i really love this see how it has like the light on it i think i'm gonna try that one so we're gonna build a mailbox together okay so i have assessed the damage it's not too bad um, luckily the top of the mailbox, like the part where she puts the mail in, is fine. So I'm actually just going to utilize that. I might spray paint it just to make it look nicer. But I do have some um, landscaping timbers out here. I'll use as like the base. And right here. And I'll just use this to make a new post because it's our post that's messed up yeah this will work just need some post hole diggers and i can get busy what am i doing let me come this way oh i'll put that right there i started off using the post hole diggers but y'all those are so hard to use i ended up using the shovel and it was a lot easier and i did have to dig a pretty deep hole in order to make sure that the post was nice and solid i personally chose not to use concrete or anything like that i figured the having two posts because the type of mailbox that i'm building and it being in there deep enough would be plenty enough to hold it up straight hopefully i mean the old mailbox was in there with a tiny little piece of wood and it held up for four years so i think this will work <laughs> So the original plan was to just use wood that I had on hand. So I actually had these landscape timbers um, that we used back when we had our pool fence. If you guys remember that, we had a pool in our backyard and we fenced it off because the kids were really little and couldn't swim at that time. 
and these are the posts that we had at that time. So I just utilized these. Um, I buried them as deep as I possibly could and then I just cut off the extra off the top. Um, and then I ended up having to go to Lowe's and buy materials. I wasn't going to. I was going to use what I had on hand, but I felt like the end result wasn't going to be as nice as I wanted it to be. So I ran and I grabbed a 8 foot 1 by 8 board actually two of these, I got two of these, and then I got a bunch of two by fours to use as the sides. Um, so I'm starting off with my first cut here. This is gonna go on the front of the four, the landscape timber. It's like a four by four post. And this is gonna give me the width of my mailbox. And then I did end up cutting a smaller piece, which is where the mailbox is actually going to sit on top of. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling it now. I was honestly just winging this project. I really didn't know, like I didn't have any plans I was following. I was just going based off the picture and just doing my absolute best. And sometimes it's all you got to do. You don't have to be perfect. If the end result looks good, who cares what, the <laughs> what it took to get there? You know what I mean? So um, I use this little... 2x4 to hold the back side up here and I used my level to make sure that the part where the mailbox sit was nice and level. I obviously didn't want the mailbox leaning forward or leaning up. Um, so yeah, I just took it one step at a time and I just did my best. So here's where I'm using that 1x8 I was telling you that's going to go on the front. So whenever you are standing in front of the mailbox, the 1x8 is going to be the width. And that's where I'm going to actually have the numbers of our address on the front instead of on the side. Just because of like the angle of where the, our house is, I feel like it's easier to see the address if it's on the front. So I chose to go with a wider board. Um, also using the 1x8 allows me to use the 2x4s on the insides like along the side. If you look in between the landscape timber and the end of the 1x8, see how there's like a plenty of space right there? So here I'll include a picture of, or a video clip of what I'm talking about. See how the 2x4 will sit in between the 1x8 and the landscape timber? So that's what I'm talking about. So now I'm going to go ahead and just cut a bunch of these 2x4s down. Um, each of them were cut at 2 foot, so I just cut them all at once. And this is actually where I ended up getting hurt. Too bad I didn't catch it on camera because it probably would have been hilarious to see. Um, I know I, I ate it y'all. I was basically trying to carry like six or seven two by fours at once that were cut to two feet, two foot pieces and I had them stacked up in my arms and I went to go walk and one of those like little plastic pieces that wrap around wood to hold it in place was on the ground and I didn't see it. Well, it got caught in between my two feet and it was almost like my shoelaces were tied together and boom, I went down. Wood went flying. I landed really hard on my knee which I did skin it really bad. So I went inside, I ripped my pants and everything, went inside, cleaned it up and continued to work through it because, you know, I was like, my adrenaline was pumping, obviously. I, I ate it and it was embarrassing and it hurt. <laughs> but it didn't really start hurting until I started to finish up the work and then I ended up not finishing the mailbox in this video. So I am sorry to leave you hanging on a project. I hate to do that, but it happens, you know, accidents happen. So turned out y'all while I'm actually in bed doing this voiceover I um, ended up getting an infection in my knee and I'm on antibiotics now still relaxing in bed it hurts so freaking bad this is probably the most pain I've been in since I've had my kids I like I'm not even joking you I didn't realize that a infection could hurt this much um, but I'm trying my best to rest and I will get back to the mailbox when I can, <laughs> but I am going to go ahead and include the rest of the footage of what I was able to get um, before I injured myself and couldn't work anymore. To attach the boards, I'm just using drywall screws, by the way. Um, I have a whole bunch on hand, and I feel like it, it works fine. We, <laughs> we use drywall screws for everything. I swear they just work the best. Um, and... I plan on staining and sealing the mailbox, so I'll just stain and seal right over top of the screw and I shouldn't have an issue.
I did go ahead and attach the mailbox at this point just because I knew that I probably wasn't going to be able to finish the project. Um, I do plan on taking it off though and repainting it. I want to repaint the little flag piece and then the whole mailbox just, you know, repaint it black. Um, and then as far as the wood, or not the wood, I'm sorry, the screws go on the side where you can see. Once I stain the entire thing, it won't be as noticeable the dark screws so just keep that in mind I plan on going with the same stain color I used in the carport and for my front columns and it helps hide that black screw pretty well so I'm not too concerned um, against the light lighter wood the screws are definitely an eyesore so I I get it but like I said once it's all stained and sealed um, it should look really good this point now I'm just adding a 1x8 on the top up here and then I do plan on trimming this out and adding some decorative detail to it because y'all know I can't just do like a regular old mailbox without some type of pretty trim work. <laughs> so <laughs> I um, added this piece and I just leveled it out as best as I could. So at the top here where I originally cut the 1x8 I did have a slight angle so I had to use some wood to kind of like shimmy it a little bit just to make it as level as I could and then the next day actually is when I came out here and I added some trim around the top up here to just give it like a decorative look. The trim I'm using I actually had left over from my daughter's bedroom makeover that I did so it just worked perfect and it has just a really pretty detail. I can't wait to stain it because I feel like it's going to make all the details pop and then of course add the numbers and I also bought some plants to plant around the bottom of the mailbox like I decided to go all out. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this project. I feel like it turned out so good. Um, Y'all will have to let me know what you think so far. I apologize I couldn't finish up the work and share with you the final reveal. It's just, you know, accidents happen and it just, it's eating me alive. I can't stand it. <laughs> but I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think of the mailbox so far. Also, just a quick reminder that Match Masters will be linked down below if you want to check out a new fun game to try. Definitely think that it's worth it. 
and you can just click on my link in the description box, download Match Masters, and complete the in-game rewards calendar to win daily free gifts and a chance to win that $500 Amazon gift card. I will have a QR code here on the screen as well that you can scan so it's easy to download or like I said, just click the link. Um, but thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you so, so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.